Hi, this is lesson 6.5, BC Calculus Logistic Equations. Now, before we've done exponential growth models with the SEC formula, and that assumes unlimited growth, and that's unrealistic for most populations. Sooner or later, a population is going to level off. And so what we have is a carrying capacity. To model this, we can use what we call a logistics differential equation, the PDT is equal to k times p m minus p m remember is your carrying capacity p is your population k is some constant that we're going to be dealing with the solution equation is of this form right here so if I take this equation uh, this differential equation and solve it I'm gonna get this so we'll show that later on this gets pretty involved so for example a national park is capable of supporting no more than 100 grizzly bears. We model the equation with the logistic differential equation with our constant being 0 0.001. Write the differential equation, so let's do that. So my rate of change of the population is going to be equal to my k value, which is 0 0.001, which is right there. And then I'm going to use the p and then my M, M is 100. So that would be my differential equation, modeling this with 100 grizzly bears, and then also my constant being 0 0.001 for my differential equations here. B says, the slope field is represented over here. Where do we have a horizontal asymptote? Where does it look like it? Well, I hope that you can see that it's right here at 100. Horizontal asymptote, why? Well, that would be what my carrying capacity would be for this population. So I'm gonna be approaching that as we go on. What if the starting point is above the asymptote? So for instance, it's up here. What's going to happen? Well, you can probably see that I'm going to be approaching my horizontal asymptote as I go here. So I'm gonna be going to 100 bears. What happens if the starting point is below this asymptote? Same thing, except for we're gonna be growing and we're gonna be approaching like this. Part C says, okay, let's start with 10 bears. Sketch this graph. And so this would be the solution curve to this slope field. So if I start here at 10, and I don't have to necessarily go through these marks, but boy, it sure looks like I can go through these marks. But I'm going to approach up here, and my general feeling is that I'm going to go, can't do a straight line perfectly here, but I'm going to be something like that. And so I'm going to start here at 10 bears, and then I'm going to go up to 100, not going over 100. If you want to play around with what these slope fields look like, you can just Google Desmos slope fields and then type in your equations that you want to do and, and play around with these things a little bit. I think it's quite fun and they have a little cursor that you can go ahead and follow this curve as well. So try that too if you have time. And then part D says that we have this differential equation we want to solve for this. This is going to get quite involved so you need a little bit of room for this. So if we try to solve this, we have to get your P's on one side and any T's or constants on the other side. So if I divide both sides by the P and the 100 minus P and multiply both sides by DT, I'm going to get this right here, DT. Now I can integrate both sides, but when I do integrate both sides, I am going to have problems with this side right here. So I have to do partial fractions to split that up. So try to set that up and I'll come back to you. So I did the setup here where these two fractions added together are going to give me this. So here's my setup here and I need to clear the fractions. So I'm gonna multiply everything by I can do this because I have the equal sign. I'm doing both sides of the equal sign. So I need to let P be 100 and I need P to be 0. 
both of those cases. So if I let it 100 here, so B times 100 is going to be 1. So B is equal to 1 over 100. And then I put in 0 into there. That's going to go away. So it's going to be A times 100 minus 0 would also be 1. Same thing. So I get the both the same constant for the A and the B. So now I can go ahead and do my integration. So here's my setup. This is my left side integral. This is my right side integral because I still had this piece right here from before. So I had to put that down here. So then I take the antiderivative. I'm going to get some LNs going on here. So if I take the antiderivative of this piece, I get 1 over 100 ln p, absolute value. This piece here, this is 100 minus p. So when I do the reverse chain rule, I need this negative here because this p is negative. So this is going to be minus 1 over 100 ln 100 minus p. And then the antiderivative of this is just going to be 0 0.001 times t plus your constant of integration. And then we can go ahead... Why don't we multiply everything through by 100? And it works better, actually, if we multiply through by negative 100. So I'm going to make this term negative, this term positive, and then this term is going to be negative. And I guess I have a new constant. If that was 1, that was 2. So I can go ahead and combine these two together using our rules of logarithm. So it's going to be ln of 100 minus p all over p is equal to negative 0.001t plus c2. So in order to get that p out of there, I had to get the logarithm all of one object of that logarithm. So now I can E both sides. So I'm going to get 100 minus P all over P is equal to, now i got a new constant, E to the negative 0.001 T. Oh, and I did forget to multiply this one by 100. So this is now just 0.1. Okay? Sorry about that. So I can wrap it this left side, so it's 100 over P minus 1 is equal to, remember I'm solving for P, C3 E to the negative 0.1 T, and then bring the 1 over, so we can reciprocate and multiply by 100, so this is going to be 100 all over 1 plus C3 E to the negative 0.1 T. So I flip this over and then multiply both sides by 100 after flipping this side over too. So I have my initial condition of 10 grizzly bears. So if I want to find the particular solution for this, this is going to be 10 is equal to 100 all over 1 plus C3 E to the negative 0.1, and my t then is 0, which is just 1. So if I multiply by 1 there, so I need 10 from 100 divided by what number? Well, that's going to be 10, so C3 would be equal to 9. So finally, my particular solution is going to be P is equal to 100 all over 1 plus 9e e to the negative 0.1t. I hope you all found a lot of enjoyment out of that. Well, what we want to do is look for our, our uh, situations where this does occur. Notice that we do have a P and another P. So we're going to have two, uh, when we do the slope field, the two horizontal asymptotes kind of set us up. One is at 0, one is at 100. So you should be thinking logistics equation when you see both of these P's. And then also, this is my result that this is my initial population, which is 100. And then we also have, we also have this constant k, or it's not k exactly in this case, but where did that come from? Well, that came from back over here when I took 100 
and multiply it by 0 0.001 and negative. And so this is your K value, and then this is your initial population. So that's just going to be K times our initial population. So if we can find that generalities, maybe we can jump from the beginning to the end right away. So that's what part E is asking. Instead of solving this differential equation, can we use the, the general form of the logistics equation right here to find the same solution? So my population is going to be equal to my carrying capacity, which we said was 100, 1 plus C E to the negative 0 0.001 times your 100 times T. And notice the negative comes in right there. And that's pretty much what we have. We just have to find the C value. So to find the C value, we do the same thing that we did up here. So we can find the 9. So we can solve that C value being 9. And so my solution would be 100 all over 1 plus my C E to the, let's multiply 100 times that 0 0.001. So we get exactly the same thing. That's a lot easier, isn't it? So we found a lot of patterns, so we can go ahead and jump right into this equation. You should know this equation, memorize it. Now, part F says, I want my limit as t goes to infinity. Well, what happens as t goes to infinity? Well, this will be e to the negative infinity. Well, that would be zero, so it's gonna be one plus zero on the bottom. So the limit as t so that's t goes to infinity of p of t is going to be 1 plus 0 on this denominator and 100 over that. So my limit is going to be equal to 100. Well, that's my carrying capacity. That's what we're looking for in all these problems. This is a great model for you people in uh, AP Environmental Science, AP Bio. Now let's use that equation. So when will the bear population reach 50? 50 is half halfway, so I'm going to go 50 is equal to 100 all over 1 plus my 9e to the negative 0.1t. And you can just go ahead on a calculator and solve that, but that's going to be t is equal to about 21 years. 972 when we go to three decimal places is which what we want. So that's the time that it's going to take to get to about 50 grizzly bears. Now, the question is, is when will the bear population be growing the fastest? That means the slope is going to be the greatest. So in my logistics curve, I'm going to hit an inflection point right here. That inflection point is halfway between my two horizontal asymptotes. And so that's going to be spot on 50. So it's going to be exactly the same time period. So this is going to be when P is equal to 50, T is equal to the same thing, 21.972 years. So two things out of this really is that one, the slope fields have two horizontal asymptotes. And so, so does the logistics curve when we look at it. The other thing is that if you can set up the differential equation to give you two horizontal asymptotes, which is what we have right here and right here, because p equal to 0 and p equal to 100 gives me those two horizontal asymptotes, then we're going to have a carrying capacity logistics curve. If we can do that, then we can go straight to this equation, and we're going to be laughing. Ho, ho, ho. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And please have a great day.